Hey, this is Ryan Johnson, and I'm going to talk to you about the Eagle Talon Tactical Tomahawk. The Eagle Talon Tactical Tomahawk started in 2001. Uh, in the 80s and 90s, I spent most of my time making pipe tomahawks and traditional 18th century, early 19th century uh, trade axes and spike tomahawks. In 2000, I had a, a customer of mine contact me. He was with uh, U.S. Air Force Special Operations. And he said, I love your French and Indian uh, era spike tomahawk, but I'd like something like that for military use. And so I started forging them. He ordered five for his crew. And originally I was forging those uh, traditionally, you know, uh, punched eyes and uh, forged out of a solid piece of steel, separate handle. And um, the more I worked on the project, the more I thought, you know, he really doesn't look, need uh, something that's historically accurate. It's not what he wants. What he wants is a functional tool. And so I put my engineering hat on. I was a mechanical engineer by training and uh, put that hat on and said, well, what would we do as an engineer? You know, I take this, this time-honored weapon and tool and translate it into modern times. And so I took what worked and discarded the rest. Um, what worked on the original tomahawks were the lines. The lines were amazing. Weight distribution was amazing. The spike is actually amazing um, design. And so I started, uh, instead of doing a separate head and handle, went ahead and made it all one unit. And uh, this really changed the nature of tactical tomahawks, um, this particular tomahawk. Um, we made those five, and uh, that right after that is when 9-11 happened. Uh, some of the fifth group guys that were heading over to Afghanistan saw these uh, with the Air Force guys and uh, ended up ordering them, and uh, that order actually became world famous, uh, was, lo was documented by the local paper and got picked up by the AP, and that's how things really got rolling. So Eagle Talons were going over with 5th Group at, uh, during Operation Task Force Dagger. Um, I started making those tomahawks right here in this shop. And uh, originally they were made out of 1075. Uh, I was differentially heat treating the head entirely. And they had uh, paracord wrapped handles. And also uh, some of the early ones had micarta handles. As time went on, uh, as more and more were sent to Afghanistan, um, I changed over steels. Um, I had a, a Navy SEAL bend a handle on one, prying with it. And so we went from the 1075 to a 4140. In this particular one, this is a much older Eagle Talon, uh, 4140 was used. And so we would use a pre-hardened 4140, hand grind the, the bevels, and then selectively harden the forward edge and spike. Over time, those steels continued to change. Now we use an ADCRV2. For most of our Eagle Talons, ADC RV2 is an extremely tough steel, but also has very good edge holding properties. Um, we use a much thinner edge now, and the ADC RV2 lends itself to that. In those early days, it was just me and my dad and a cat, you know, hand making these tomahawks, going out to uh, Green Berets. And um, at one point, my dad got sick and was unable to work anymore, so it just became me. And there was a few years where it was just me. And uh, we restricted all sales to just military sales, no civilian sales. Um, and at that point, I was struggling trying to keep up. And uh, uh, ended up uh, talking with Richard Carmack about starting a company. We had, uh, they had been introduced to the company. We knew each other from church, but uh, his boys had helped me wrap a bunch of tomahawks. I had a a uh, batch of tomahawks going to Iraq uh, for the 1-4 Marines uh, right before the Battle of Fallujah and uh, I had to get these tomahawks out on a plane going to those guys and uh, uh, didn't have enough time to do it myself so his boys helped me wrap these tomahawk candles um, on an all-nighter of pizza and Monty Python. So after that Richard and I talked about starting a company where we could do this at scale and actually try to meet demand. And that's when RMJ Tactical was formed in 2005. Since then, we, we started 
we started making the, the, the Eagle Talon Tactical Tomahawk and the Kestrel, which was a shorter version of the Eagle Talon. Um, and we used a combination of machining and hand grinding. Uh, eventually, um, we started machining ourselves and uh, you know, the rest is history. We've made thousands of Eagle Talon tactical tomahawks. They've been in Iraq, Afghanistan, Central America, Africa. Uh, they've been around the world. They've saved a lot of lives and they've taken a lot of lives. Um, but it's a historically important tomahawk. Some features about the Eagle Talon that make it unique. One, the, the narrow French and Indian War style where you have a narrow handle. Uh, it makes it a very useful handle all the way up uh, without getting in the way. This spike is what's called a distally tapered spike. So it goes from wide to narrow and wide to narrow. There's nothing to get hung up on. So when I punch into something, I can come right back out. It's very important. I want to be able to punch, come out, punch, come out, whether I'm breaching or whether I'm hitting someone with it. The forward edge, same way, distal tapers. The beard is something that I added to the tactical tomahawk and it's pretty much become a staple with tactical tomahawks, the sharpened beard. The reason for that is twofold. One, from a combative standpoint, anything I hit with my tomahawk, I can pull and rip. Two, when I'm breaching things, if I get into a wall, I can cut my way out. If I'm breaching a door or window, I can cut my way out. Um, that also works great with safety glass. Tomahawks are great for breaching tools. Most people look at this and they think of it being a weapon, but most of the uses really are about breaching. Most soldiers, uh, you know, real breaching happens with, with explosives and with breaching tools like a halogen bar, but that's a lot of stuff to carry and most people don't have access to it. The tomahawk uh, allows a person to carry a small footprint lightweight breech component that they can rake and break glass with. I can bust through glass and then rake it with this neck. I can put this into a lock and break the lock. I can break chain with the spike. I can cut safety glass. I can do a wide variety of breaching um, that uh, normally you would have to wait for somebody. So it allows a shooter to get on target so in the early days of Afghanistan, I, had a, I was working with the wife of a Green Beret. She was ordering some tomahawks for her husband and a few of the guys that he was fighting with. And uh, she said, well, I'm gonna be sending this in a big box of socks, so you don't have to worry about wrapping this up. I'll wrap it up in socks. I said, wrap it up in socks? What are you talking about? She said, well, obviously you, don't, you haven't done any military time or you would know socks or what they're, you know, that's the most important thing in the world to those guys because they're, they're hoofing it everywhere. Um, and as I talked to her, I said, well, what is he going to, you know, use this for? And she said, I don't know what he's going to use it for. As far as I know, he's just ordering it for the machismo factor, but that's important. And I said, what do you mean? She said, look, whatever it takes to get him back. And said, if a tomahawk carrying that thing makes him seem more badass, feel more badass, and take it to the enemy and come home, then, then good. Carry a tomahawk. And, and I think that's really uh, important the more I've thought about that over the years, the idea of mindset. Because that's what she was really talking about was mindset. The idea that when you carry something like a tomahawk, the, the practicality of it, the lethality of it, but also the history behind it. It's a certain mindset that you don't see often today. And, and that's that, that frontier mindset of I'm willing to take it to this level. I'm going to do what it takes. So that's the Eagle Talon Tactical Tomahawk. I'm Ryan Johnson. I hope you enjoyed the little history lesson.